Walter Herman, the 20th of September 1910 to the 11th of August 1987, was a German nuclear physicist and mechanical engineer who worked on the German nuclear energy project during World War II. After the war, he headed a laboratory for special issues of nuclear disintegration at Laboratory V in the Soviet Union. Topic: Biography. Hermann was born in Querfurt and completed his engineering degree at the Dresden University of Technology in 1937. Topic: <laughs> Career. Topic: <laughs> Pre-war. After completing his degree, Hermann spent several years as a research engineer at the power plant located in Bolin, Saxony, the headquarters of the AG Works. In January 1939, he was transferred to Dresden. Due to his skill in thermal engineering, and knowledge in the technical systems of power plants, Hermann helped build the experimental power station located in Espenheim during his time in Dresden. Uran project On the 22nd of April 1939, after hearing a paper by Wilhelm Hanley on the use of uranium fission in a uran machine uranium machine, i.e., nuclear reactor, Georg Jews, along with Hanley, notified Wilhelm Dames, at the Reichserziehungsministerium REM, Reich Ministry of Education, of potential military applications of nuclear energy. Just seven days later, a group, organized by Dames, met at the REM to discuss the potential of a sustained nuclear chain reaction. The group included the physicists Walter Both, Robert Doppel, Hans Geiger, Wolfgang Gentner, Wilhelm Hanley, Gerhard Hoffmann, and Jews. After this, informal work began at the Georg August University of Göttingen, and the group of physicists was known informally as the First Uranverin Uranium Club and formally as Arbeitsgemeinschaft für Kernphysik. The Second Uranverin began after the Heereswaffenamt HWA, Army Ordnance Office squeezed out the Reichsforschungsrat RFR, Reich Research Council of the REM and started the formal German nuclear energy project. The second Uranverin had its first meeting on 16 September 1939. The meeting was organized by Kurt Diebner and held in Berlin. It was then that Kaiser Wilhelm Institute für Physik (KWIP), after World War II, reorganized and renamed the Max Planck Institute for Physics in berlin dahlem was placed under HWA authority, with Diebner as the administrative director, and the military control of the nuclear research commenced. Some of the research was carried out at the Versuchstelle testing station of the HWA in Gotto. Diebner was director of the facility. When it was apparent that the nuclear energy project would not make a decisive contribution to ending the war effort in the near term, control of the KWIP was returned to the its umbrella organization, the Kaiser Wilhelm Gesellschaft KWG, after World War II renamed the Max Planck Gesellschaft in January 1942 and control of the project was relinquished to the RFR that year. However, the HWA did maintain its testing station in Gotto and continue research there until the end of the war. It was at the Gotto facility that Hermann participated in nuclear fission experiments designated GI and G3. The G1 experiment had lattices of 6,800 uranium oxide cubes about 25 tons in the nuclear moderator paraffin. The work verified Karl Heinz Hocker's calculations that cubes were better than rods, and rods were better than plates. The G3 experiment was a small scale design, but it generated an exceptionally high rate of neutron production. The G3 model was superior to nuclear fission chain reaction experiments that had been conducted at the KWIP in Berlin de Hem, the University of Heidelberg, or the University of Leipzig. 
Herman also participated in work to explore the initiation of a nuclear reaction through the detonation of explosives. Topic in Russia. Near the close of World War II, the Soviet Union sent special search teams into Germany to locate and deport German nuclear scientists or any others who could be of use to the Soviet atomic bomb project. The Russian also's teams were headed by NKVD Colonel General A. P. Zavanyagin and staffed with numerous scientists, from their only nuclear laboratory, attired in NKVD officers' uniforms. In the autumn of 1945, Heinz Pose was offered the opportunity to work in the Soviet Union, which he accepted. He arrived in the Soviet Union, with his family, in February 1946. He was to establish an head laboratory V also known by the codename MALOJAROSLAVETS-10, after the nearby town by the same name in Obninsk. The scientific staff at Laboratory V was to be both Soviet and German, the former being mostly political prisoners from the Gulag or exiles. This type of facility is known as a Sharashka. Laboratory B in Sungal was also a Sharashka and working on the Soviet atomic bomb project. Notable Germans at Laboratory B were Hans Joachim Born, Alexander Katch, Nikolaus Riel, and Karl Zimmer. Notable Russians from the Gulag were N. V. Timofeyev Rysovsky and S. A. Vosnarensky. On 5 March 1946, in order to staff his laboratory, Pose and NKVD General Kravchenko, along with two other officers, went to Germany for six months to hire scientists. Additionally, Pose procured equipment from the companies AEG, Carl Zeiss AG, Schott Jenner, and Mansfeld, which were in the Russian occupation zone. Pose planned 16 laboratories for his institute, which was to include a chemistry laboratory and eight laboratories. Three heads of laboratories, Chileus, Hermann, and Rexa, were Pose's colleagues who worked with him at the German Army's testing station in Gotto, under the Uranverin project. See below, internal reports, eight laboratories in the institute were Heinz Poser's Laboratory for Nuclear Processes Werner Zulius's Laboratory for Uranium Reactors Walter Hermann's Laboratory for Special Issues of Nuclear Disintegration Westmayer's Laboratory for Systematic Nuclear Reactions Professor Carl Friedrich Weiss's laboratory for the study of natural and artificial radioactivity. Schmidt's laboratory to study methodologies for nuclear measurement. Professor Ernst Rex's laboratory for applied nuclear physics. Hans Jürgen von Ertzen's laboratory to study cyclotrons and high voltage. Topic. 1950s When his time with the Soviet nuclear program was done, Hermann returned to the DDR to focus on restoring the country's energy supply. In December 1945 he was ordered by the Soviet military administration in Germany to carry out the reconstruction of the nation's boiler plants. In May 1953 he started a project to modernize the central steam generator in Berlin. As recognition for his service, and skill at restoring energy in the DDR Hermann was sent to Hungary to manage the commissioning, designing, and construction of power plants. In July 1956, because of his merits and his many years of professional experience in power plant engineering, Hermann is appointed a professor at the University of Magdeburg School of Mechanical Engineering as the head and founder of the Institute of Thermal Engineering. Topic: 1960s At the beginning of the fall semester, 1960, Hermann was elected as the Dean of Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. In 1962, Hermann was made head of a group of experts tasked with the stabilization of the large-scale power plant in Lubbenau. 
In 1964, he was the initiator of the first ever thermotechnical colloquia. In 1968, he was made the first director of apparatus and plants at THMD. Topic: 1970s. A particularly high honor of his scientific life's work, Hermann was awarded an honorary doctorate from the Technical University of Dresden in 1976. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Internal reports. The following reports were published in Kernphysikalische Forschungsberichte Research Reports in Nuclear Physics, an internal publication of the German Uranverein. The reports were classified top secret, they had very limited distribution, and the authors were not allowed to keep copies. The reports were confiscated under the Allied Operation Alsos and sent to the United States Atomic Energy Commission for evaluation. In 1971, the reports were declassified and returned to Germany. The reports are available at the Karlsruhe Nuclear Research Center and the American Institute of Physics. F. Burke, W. Bormann, W. Chileus, Kurt Diebner, Georg Hartwig, K. H. Hocker, W. Hermann, H. Pose, and Ernst Rexer Bericht über einen Würfelwirsuch MIT Uranoxid und Paraffin G125, dated before 26 November 1942. Kurt Diebner, Werner Chileus, W. Hermann, Georg Hartwig, F. Burke, and E. Kamin über die Neutronenvermehrung einer Anordnung aus Uranwerfeln und Schwerem Wasser G3, G210. Kurt Diebner, Georg Hartwig, W. Hermann, H. Westmeyer, Werner Chileus, F. Burke, and Karl Heinz Hocker Vorlaufige Mittelung über einen Versuch mit Uranwufeln und Schwerem Eis als Bremsubstanz G211. Kurt Diebner, Georg Hartwig, W. Hermann, H. Westmeyer, Werner Chileus, F. Gerke, and Karl Heinz Hocker Bericht über einen Versuch MIT Werfeln aus Uran Metal und Schwerem Eis G212, July 1943. W. Hermann, Georg Hartwig, H. Rockwitz, W. Trinks, and H. Schaub versuche über die Einleitung von Kernreaktoren und durch die Wirkung explodierender Stoff G303 Bibliography Henschel, Klaus editor and Anne M. Henschel editorial assistant and translator Physics and National Socialism, an anthology of primary sources Berkhauser, 1996. ISBN 0-8176-5312-0 Kant, Horst Werner Heisenberg and the German Uranium Project, Otto Hahn and the Declarations of Main I and Göttingen, Preprint 203 Max Planck Institute für Wissenschaftsgeschichte, 2002 Macrakis, Christie Surviving the Swastika, Scientific Research in Nazi Germany Oxford, 1993. Olenikov, Pavel v. German Scientists in the Soviet Atomic Project, The Nonproliferation Review Vol. 7, No. 2, 1-30 2000. The author has been a group leader at the Institute of Technical Physics of the Russian Federal Nuclear Center in Snezensk, Chelyabinsk 70. Walker, Mark German National Socialism and the Quest for Nuclear Power 1939-1949 Cambridge, 1993. ISBN 0-521-43804-7 Notes <laughs> <laughs> 